Hello, and we're going to start now with the second part of the subject. Now we're going to go through social determinants of health and also the concept of salutogenesis. And first, we're going to have a look to the social determinants of health part. Well, this field, when we are talking about social determinants of health, we refer to the conditions in which people are born, grow, live, work and age, since all these conditions will influence their health. So these conditions are shaped by families and communities and by the distribution of money, power and resources at global, national and local levels. And they are affected by policy choices at each of these levels. So, by social determinants of health, we mean these different groups. They can be grouped as follows. First, we have the social institutions and these structures, these systems influence health. Also, the surroundings, the neighborhoods, the workplaces, town, cities, and also the built environments are key determinants for health. And also the social relationships, like for example, the position in social hierarchy and the different treatment of social groups and the social networks. So here, in this example that you have in the screen, it was taken by the original source from Dahlgren and Whitehead, who are one of the main authors of this concept of social determinants of, of health. And they said in 1991, when they started working in the field, that there were many determinants of health, not only those according to the age, sex or genes, but also to others which are more related to the social and community networks and also some others coming from the general socioeconomic, cultural and environmental conditions. So, for example, unemployment is a very important social determinant for health. Education is also very important in this field. The work environment, there are many important areas that will determine the health status in the population. So I would like you to go through this reference that you have published in this subject in order to expand your knowledge on the social determinants of health since this is a very clear theme in order to connect health and society. And then the second part of this uh, topic, salutogenesis, when we are talking about these concepts, uh, we are referring to Aaron Antonovsky, who is considered the father of salutogenesis. He was a medical sociologist, and in the 60s, he captured these concepts. And he made this interesting question, what did some people manage to avoid illness and do well even when subjected to extreme stressors compared to other people who didn't. So he was able to show that relatively unstressed people had much more resistance to illness than those who were more stressed. They were more sick, they had more sick leaves according to this stressor. So Antonovsky argued that the experience of well-being constitutes a sense of coherence. But I'm not going to go much into this term because our uh, lecturer, uh, Professor Liv Sharven, she will go more in detail in another subject according to this term. So, though modern medicine has increasingly come to ask about the origin of illness, 
Antonovsky suggested that an equally important question to pose is what is the origin of health? So, when we compare these two models, salutogenesis and pathogenesis, we can say that the existing model, pathogenesis, uh, studies the origin of disease. However, salutogenesis studies will cover, will explore the origins of health. So here we have these two main concepts and the differences, the different approaches of each different term, pathogenesis and salutogenesis, as you can see in the screen. So this uh, approach of salutogenesis is quite relevant for us because, as you can see, this is a positive perspective of health. We are looking for ways to improve health, to bring more health into the individual, and we are applying these concepts in our daily practice. Remember when we were doing our practice on campus, we said that we need to focus on healthy resources in the patient, healthy resources in order to move from there and not only focusing on lack of movement or illness in the patient. So this perspective should be brought to our daily clinical practice and that's why we would like you to understand how this positive perspective, this health perspective is so important in our daily practice. So here we have, well, just to complete this video, here you have a good story that represents very well this other perspective that we have in health and that is represented by salutogenesis. And I, of course, uh, fully recommend you to go through these obligatory references made by Eva Langeland, and you can find them in our Aula Virtual. So this is everything I wanted to share with you according to this second part. Thank you.